Hi everyone, Angela here. In this video, I'm going to be unboxing the X-Tool M1 laser and blade cutting machine. This craft machine integrates laser engraving, laser cutting, and blade cutting into one. There's a handy pull tab at the top. Once opened, you're greeted with a colorful collection of project ideas. The machine is well packed inside with styrofoam, cardboard, and a plastic bag. Peel away the film from the top of the lid, along the bottom, and from the underside of the lid. Inside, there's a thank you card and the user manual, the materials pack, the power cord and the power adapter, a USB cable, a box of blades, the exhaust pipe, a set of triangular prisms, the pipe adapter, the pipe clamp, and screws for the adapter. Under some more styrofoam, there's also two mats. Inside, at the bottom of this small unit, is the laser outlet and also the blade module. Up top is the camera. Inside the user manual, there are instructions printed in 11 languages. I've just highlighted the English. Squeeze and place the clamp over the smoke exhaust pipe. Then attach the adapter to the machine with the screws. There's no need to use a screwdriver. Put the pipe over the adapter and clamp in place. The other end can be placed out a window or attached to an air purifier. On the back is the power switch, the USB port, the power port, and an extension port. Plug in the power adapter and connect a power cable to it. You can connect the X2 machine to your computer using Wi-Fi or the USB cable. I just need an adapter to connect to my laptop. In this box, there are five replacement 45 degree angle blades. Easily pull out the blade module, push the pin at the end, and insert the blade. It's all magnetic, so it's easy to slot back in. There are 10 of these triangular rods. Simply put them in the machine as risers so that air can circulate properly when cutting wood. The mats are sticky on both sides, the blue has a lighter grip, and the pink has a stronger grip for fabric. Included in the materials pack is a sheet of PU faux leather, glossy stick-on vinyl, white sticker paper, 3mm basswood, and a stainless steel dog tag. Now let's test some samples. First place the other end of the exhaust pipe out a window. Because my window's fairly large and I didn't want any of the smoke blowing back in, I made an insert for the gap. I'll show you how we did this in another video. You can also purchase the X-Tool smoke purifier. Connect the M1 to power and switch it on. The front indicator will flash white and then turn blue. Go to xtool.com, select software at the top, and then download to your computer or device. Once done, open up Xtool Creative Space, or XCS. You can start creating here, or go to the top right corner and connect device. Select Xtool from the device list, and the camera will capture the image from inside. First, I'll open up the protective lid. Put two prisms on the base, and then place the wood on top. The red dot that you see in the center measures the thickness of the material. When the lid is closed again, the camera will capture a new image. You now see the wood inside the machine. Up in the left-hand corner, you can go into the settings and choose your units either in inches or millimeters. On the left, I'm going to open up Shapes, expand it, and from the list I'm going to choose the heart. You can reposition it, drag it to change the size, or you can enter your measurements in these boxes, and you can also rotate it. On the right-hand side, you can select the processing type, score, engrave, or cut, which is what I'd like to do with this shape. Once I select that, I click on the image again to add more details. On the Xtool website, if you go to Support, go down to Material Settings, you'll find a list of the different models and materials along with the recommended process settings. I'm selecting Xtool M1, and then you can see all the tabs for the different materials. 
For my basswood, I'm cutting it. I have the 5 watt model. The recommended power is 100, speed 3, and 1 pass. If I were engraving it, the power would be at 90, speed 150, with 1 pass. From this drop down menu, we need to communicate with the machine what we're doing. Choose from laser flat, laser cylindrical, open plane, blade cut, or print and blade cut. I'm selecting the laser flat, and then from the materials drop down menu, I'm selecting their 3mm plywood. For the height, I'm making sure to select that it's on the triangular prisms. This has changed the position a little bit, so I just need to adjust it. Because I've selected a next tool material, you can see that the settings are automatically entered. Next select Framing, and then it'll ask you to press the front button. In this framing function, the laser module moves around showing you a preview of the processing area. Once that's complete, just hit the Start button and also the Front button on the machine. Take note of the warning not to leave the device unattended when it's working. There's a running timer on the right showing you how long the process took. You can find the link for this machine down in the description below. I absolutely love the way this wood cut out with just one pass. Next, I'll remove the prisms and just give the bottom a quick wipe before putting in the stainless steel tag. I'm removing the heart from the canvas, then I'm selecting laser flat, stainless steel tag for the material, and no for the height raised. On the left, I'm selecting text and then engrave for the processing type. In the text box, I'm replacing it with a couple of initials, then I'm adjusting it and centering it onto the tag. You can change the style, the typeface, and also the size of the font. Once that's done, you can frame and process. This came out pretty good, but next time I think I'll make it darker with two passes and the font slightly smaller. You probably don't need to, but I'm going to put back these prisms so that I can engrave on this store-bought pre-cut wooden blank. If you're finding this video useful, make sure to like, share, subscribe, and turn on all of your notifications. Now I think that's pretty fun. I think next time I'll just make it a little bit darker. Before I remove the protective film from the cutting mats for blade cutting, I just want to mark them on both sides so that I know I'll be putting them back correctly when I'm finished using them. Remove from both sides and then place the mat on the bottom of the machine between the marks. Then I'll center some vinyl at the top. I've selected blade cut and for the material I'm selecting self-adhesive PVC sheet. Again I'm going to go to shapes on the left and this time I'm going to choose the leaf. I'll reposition and expand it a bit. I just love the way the camera shows you exactly where it's going to be on the material. Again, the settings are preset and I just need to hit process. This blade cutting didn't take very long at all. The cut was nice and clean and the vinyl peeled off really easily. Now because I'm mainly a sewing channel, I'm excited to see what I can do with fabric. I've been testing it out and I can't wait to create some new projects and share them with you. Again, the link for this machine is down in the description. Thanks again for watching. Take care and see you in the next video.